We're back on shift inside the ambulance. Hello, Black Country! Hey! We're back! Go, 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 go. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Oh. Where about in your belly is a pain? Does it look bad to you? As they face more heart pounding action. I can't have a chest for me. Clear! Everyone clear! clear. And more medical emergencies. Alright. Okay, we've got some good respiratory effort now. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. Look at them now, please. Don't cry, darling. I've oh, had enough, you know. Look at that! <coughs> There are some new faces. Can I wear the team chains? Pretty please. And some old friends. I love you, John Stevens. No, you don't. Yes, I do. My life has been positively dead without you. Body mounted cameras record every moment. Can we come in and have a chat? Yeah. You've got a favourite teddy you want to take with you? I'm going to need to shave you. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. We'll need to call security for these pair. They've been nothing but trouble. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews as we take you inside the ambulance. Look, we go into the wild blue yonder. Yeah, we'll get rid of. She does my nothing. Take first yeah. exit at roundabout. She is intolerable. Just ahead, turn left. <laughs> <laughs> Have you shut her up? Yeah. Good. <laughs> She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. Has she been quiet? She has been quiet and silenced. Be quiet. Forty-two-year-old Naomi Watley has been a paramedic for five years. Today, she's on shift in Dudley with crewmate Kyle Matty. So we're going to an 81-year-old female who is throwing things and shouting and won't let the nurses near her. The only other information they have about the patient is that she has diabetes. I want to hope it's something as simple as like a hypo or a hypo. But then again, it could so be ketone fix. acidosis. Worst case scenario, but then... It's almost low, at least we can fix it. Yeah. They arrive at the patient's home within four minutes. Oh, look, she won't even let me in. Shall we try and get in first? And I'll run out for Kitty if we get in. No, we'll take the kit in, because... You can't get in, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. 81-year-old Joyce suffers with dementia and is refusing help from the district nurse or her carer. Is that who we're here for? Is that the reason why you called? Is there any other way of getting in? No. They have been waiting outside for more than 20 minutes. She thinks, she thinks you're the police. No, she thinks you're the police. So, what, what's happened? You put your um, blood sugar into yes, your mid okay. um, um, She lives on her own. Carers are coming in daily to support her, washing and dressing yeah. and cleaning. Okay. They've been fine with the carers? No. She's, she's called a load and I'm... She's not had a break, no breaks, no medication or anything. Okay. She's refusing everything. Yeah. All right. Um, has ever been like this before? I've not seen it like this before. I haven't, yeah. but the girls say she does have occasional hypo. OK, and, and what did they say the cause? What did they ever say about the cause? Hypo. Joyce has had similar episodes in the past. Until the crew can assess her, they can't work out if her agitation is down to a blood sugar problem or just a bad day with her dementia. Don't Joyce, can, I, can we talk? Can we talk? Is that OK? Hello, Joyce. No, she doesn't want me in. She's crying. Joyce! She's going to be very combative, mate. Because it's... Joyce! It's all right, darling. Okay. Joyce, Joyce, check. Okay. Okay. Joyce, can we have a talk? Can we just have a talk? Is that all right? Can we come in and have a chat? Why not? Why don't you want to have a chat? 
I force the door, she's going to fall. Joyce, we can't hear properly to get your complaints. We can't hear you. Open it a bit so I can hear you. They're going. They won't come in. We'll lock the door again. Okay. Come on. Let's lock. Who's that, Joyce? That's my children. Oh, can I stroke him? Yeah. Oh, hello. Shall we just stop? Shall we shut the door to stop yeah. her coming out? Can I lock the come door on. now? No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Tilly. Let's go in. Come on, Jill. Oh, that's not very clever, is it? No. Oh, God. There's in again. Get her out. That's Naomi. That's oh. what she's with me. She's with me. It's okay. Joyce chick, your eyes look a little bit red. Do you yeah, mind? They've been like this for a few days. Can I have a look at it? Is that alright? Yeah. They told me at the hospital one time okay. that, that my eyes were bleeding. Right. But okay. they do each. Yeah. Can I check your blood sugar as well? Yeah. I know you're diabetic. Yeah. Okay. You can have a sharp scratch now. Yeah. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Well done. You're braver than me. That would have made me cry, that would. Oh, God, I might I look big and bristly, you. but I'm not. You're the bravest of the rest. You're the nice looking lad, I'll tell you that. I bet the girls do for you, don't they? Hey. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I think so. Are you married? No, I'm not. Oh, my God, I you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> do you want to hold that for me? Yeah, give me a flag up for Joyce! you. Joyce! <laughs> you flirting, Joyce? Yeah. Joyce's blood sugars are in the normal range, so Kyle wants to do some other checks to make sure nothing else is going on. Joyce, this is our monitor. OK, it just yes. checks your heart and your blood pressure. Yeah. Can I do that? Is that all right? Yes. Joyce, chick, I'm going to ask you some questions, OK? Yeah. They're going to seem very simple, but I need you to answer them all right. Yeah. OK, what day is it today? It's Sunday. What month? Oh, month. It's uh, January, February. February. And what year? 17. 17. And who am I? You're an ambulance driver. Joyce, obviously you said you've had a few medical problems. Can you tell me what they are? I know you're diabetic. Yeah. Okay. So and you've I've had, had tuberculosis. Tuberculosis? Yes. And I've had... Cancer oh. in the cervix. Cervical cancer. No. And I've got my eyes are getting very bad because yeah. um, now I can't read anything. So that's anything. why she thinks you look good. Oh. Joyce doesn't seem to need a trip to hospital, but Naomi wants to make sure she'll be checked on later and calls her son who lives nearby. This is Naomi here. Um, the nurses have come round to see Mum and she won't let them do anything and has thrown them out and was kicking and swearing at them. Um, we've done a load of checks and they all seem okay. She seems to be answering our questions. What I'll do is I'll ring the district nurses now um, and get them to come back. I'm going to tell mum that they, somebody needs to come and do the insulin later. Um, and then I'll ring you back with the time. No, no, no worries. No, no, it's not a problem. No worries, thank you. Bye. Are you all right now? Yes. yes. Have we managed to calm Thanks. you down? Yeah. I think you just got yourself all upset. And then you were getting upset and your poor dog was getting upset. I know. I know. It's gone out. He's just there, gone to check on what's happening in the kitchen. Now, the other nurse is going to come tomorrow for the insulin. And you must drink plenty today, OK? Yeah. And keep yourself nice right. and warm. Bye. Bye. I was not expecting that. No. No. That was, a, that was a different job, shall we say. I was expecting to find something wrong. I was quite surprised when we didn't. It's not Joe. Who doesn't <laughs> like me? I'm amazing. It was a good outcome. Yeah, the right big... outcome for her. And she's happy now. We've left her yeah. not agitated, not shouting. Definitely. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. tomorrow she'll be... OK with the nurses. I think I'm going to start cycling to work soon. Good minute. 
I don't understand that running in the lark day, that is just a plan for your health. Does lifting a burger from the plate to your face count as exercise? Yes. I assume you can't have a gene implant that just changes your cholesterol. Talking about genes, do you know diarrhea can be hereditary? Can it? Yeah, it can run in your genes. Hey! <laughs> I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Regular crewmates Hannah Meredith and Aaron Campbell have just received an urgent call. 45-year-old male, Abdul Payne. Go, 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 go. Blues and twos on, the crew arrive within five minutes. Hey, you're right. Upstairs. Yeah, no worries. The patient's daughter, Sarah, called for an ambulance when her dad started experiencing acute stomach pain. Hey, you're right. Who are we coming to see? Who? My partner. Yeah, who is he? What's his name? Michael. Michael called him. Michael, what's happened to Michael today? Severe pain of his upper stomach, like above the belly button. Okay. When did that start? About three days ago. Three days ago. Yeah. Why are we here today? Because it wasn't that severe, it just got really severe today. Basically, he's been paying me with his stomach for quite some time now. He's been to GP, he's waiting for his scan. Okay. But today he's like really, really severe, he's actually quite in this pain, he can't do anything. What pain relief has he taken? Um so but I was not na pretty no. Um that's the medication he normally takes. The family are Polish and neither Michal nor his wife Beata speak much English. They rely on Sarah to translate. What are those? For like gases and whatnot. Do you want to come in and ask some questions for him yeah. as well? Okay, ask him to describe the pain for me. It's like really, really bad cramps. Like cramps? Yeah. There all the time, or is it come and go, get worse, get better? Yes, ten volt, I'm not telling you, it's not because I'm telling you all the time. All the time. Any problems going on? It's like um, once it's really, really severe, then it's like slightly. So it's like this? Yeah, like okay. this all the time. Okay, when's the last time you had a normal bowel movement? Um, kid, that's not my voice, normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Literally, this is on here. It's an anti foaming oh, agent used to reduce bloating, discomfort, and pain caused by excessive gas. Okay. It's normally fine to do the though. Yeah, it's so it's normal for him. Just tell him we're going to lift his t shirt up so we can have a look at his belly. The pain in Michal's belly is the latest in a history of medical problems. Okay, so the pain's just at the top? Yeah. Does it go anywhere else, around the sides, into the back? Um, this is just well to the gold, but the severe one is up there. OK. He also has diabetes, high blood pressure and a slipped disc. I'm just going to have a listen to his belly, so just ask him not to speak while the surface comes on, OK? Excellent bowel signs and really, really strong transferred heart signs as well. Michael was complaining of quite severe abdominal pain. Um, the thing with the abdomen is that the pain and the level of the pain you're experiencing doesn't necessarily indicate what the problem is. So it could have been anything from trapped wind to something far more sinister. Can you get onto the bed so we can do some checks on him? Yeah. It'll be a lot easier than, than trying to get everything done in here. Um. I'll help them. Yeah, There we go. We're going to 
gonna pop a needle in his arm and give him some um, some pain relief into his vein. Okay. Do you know what, what it can be? I think he might have a hernia. The crew hope intravenous paracetamol will ease Michal's pain enough to get him into the ambulance. So that's going to give the number, the pain a number for me out of 10. If not, was no pain and 10 was the worst. Um, right now it's about two, three. Yeah, but two or three. Dead. But the pain is not constant, the pain comes when the cramp yeah, yeah, yeah. comes, and when the cramp comes it's like 20. Okay. You taking him hospital? Yeah. The pain relief that we've given him, is it, it's not going to solve the problem, it's going to solve the pain. Tell him not to worry, we'll get him sorted. Well, yeah? How, how do you say don't worry in Polish? Nie 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 shit. Michael's daughter Sarah was a great asset, as Michael didn't speak uh, any English, uh, which must be... You know, as well as going through the, the pain and things that he was experiencing, it must be terrifying not to be able to tell someone what the problem is. What number is this pain now? One, two, two. Okay. Michal used to be a bus driver, but in recent years he's been too ill to work. How long have you been, guys been in England then? Um, that's a British decision, isn't it? But that one's been here 10 years. Mm -hmm. Me and my mum knowing. Really? It's long enough to get an accent. Then. I don't, I have a Polish accent. See, people, some people <laughs> tell me I don't have a Polish accent, then some people are like, are oh, you from Poland? Make up your mind. See, that, that was, that was West Midlands, that accent. What was? That was black country. Mind. <laughs> mind. <laughs> mind. How do you say, um, what number comes before 10? Before 10? Yeah. Nine. Ah, see, that, that's <laughs> not nine. what it is. What number comes after 4? 4, four or 5? See, that, 5 and 9. Yeah. That's pure black country, that is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if your dad's checked, everything else will be checked, that'll be fine. His blood pressure and everything's all right. I will give it to you now. There you go, it's for you and your partner. Oh, what's that? Some Polish wine. <laughs> what's in there? Yeah, it's just um. Hazelnuts. Yeah, unless you're like allergic. I, I, have have allergic. I have allergic to oh, yeah. nuts. Yeah. Not those though. It's alright. <laughs> you're right to step off first for me, sweet. In A and E, Michal will be fully examined to see if it is a hernia or something else causing his abdominal pain. They are a really nice family, though. To be fair. Yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? When they, you can't communicate directly with them. Obviously, Michael's in quite a lot of pain anyway. It's even harder when they can't tell us exactly what's going on. Yeah. It felt like a hernia to me. It, it looked like one, to be honest, the way that it was bulging. Yeah. It's always nice when a patient's family feeds you as well, though, isn't it? It is. It's nice Someone... to know that we're appreciated. Well, it is, yeah. relatively okay. Right. In the family, we're going to go down to Ponty Priest. And if you see Jaya, you down there. You can tell him you still have a shooter and secrets. Probably get slated for it, but I quite like Donald Trump's accent. Like, we will build the greatest wall you have ever seen. It's going to be great. It's going to be beautiful. Your accent is absolutely fantastic. I used to be able to do Northern accent, but I'm not best at that. I don't know what that was then. No, no, do I. Garlic bread? What was that? I don't know. No. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy on my soul. It's early evening and technician Anna Ray and paramedic Grant Porter 
are heading back to base when a call comes in. So we're going to 89-year-old Kathleen. Yeah, she's fallen earlier, injured leg and hip, and cannot wait there. OK. How far are we from We are quite a distance, 10.6 miles. At the patient Kathleen's bungalow, the crew are met by her daughter-in-law, Lynn. Hello, you're right. Kathleen fell earlier today. She was helped up by family, but has since been complaining of pain. Basically, she's, she's had, she had a nasty fall yeah. not so long ago. OK. Um, how, how many weeks for? Been about three, nearly four weeks now. Yeah. But um, she got up this morning and she's had another tumble. Yeah. Kath, where's it hurting? On palpations, isn't it? There, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kathleen shares a home with her daughter Gloria and dog Gizmo. In her last fall, she hurt her shoulder and her family are now worried she may have new injuries. Can you try, if you will help me, to lift, lift her legs up? That's it. Oh, lovely. Okay, put them together. Come on, that's fine. What, what I was just checking for, because a typical sign of, for example, broken hip, is if one of the legs would be shorter and rotated. That's what I was just checking, but they're not. No. So that, that, that's a good sign. You don't need to her, she's coming. Her oxygen levels are 99%. You can't really get better than this that. This is just nurses. Right, cool to be kind. I'm going to need you to stand up. Get her off. Yeah. On three. One, two, three. Push, 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 push. Oh, no. No, that's it. You can't. painful to watch. It's horribly unkind to ask someone to stand up when they're clearly in pain, uh, but it was very important for us to establish what Kathleen could and couldn't do. OK, one, two, three. Oh, you stood well that time, it's OK. Ah, yeah. oh, that's it, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, no, no, no. Kathleen can stand, but she can't bear her own weight. The crew hope that once on the ambulance, they can make her more comfortable. Adventurous. <laughs> she likes your cuddles. Ready? One, two, three. That's it. Okay. You're gonna fly. You ready? Oh, God. One, two, three. That's it. There we go. Oh, don't All right. Kathleen's daughter, Gloria, is coming with her to hospital. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here. On the way, Grant wants to run some more checks. This pain. Okay, is it still in your upper leg when you stood up? Yeah. Okay, is it up here or here, where my hand is now? Up here. Up, up on this bit here? Yeah. There. But there's nothing here? No. So it's here? Yeah. So on your top of your thigh, there. Yeah. Okay. And does it hurt when I touch it then, I take it? Mm. Does it hurt when you move your leg? Is that where it pulls? Yeah. Ah, you've been laughing away though with us. You would be distressed about is it? You're just doing you're just being mischievous for us instead. If she's not being mischievous, she's being stressed. Right. We have a choice of the two. Now Kathleen will be taken for an X-ray to check for any fractures to her hip or leg.
she was absolutely lovely, wasn't she? She was. Absolutely brilliant. It's in the right place, though. She is. Hopefully there is nothing actually broken then. She can go back to Gizmo. I've always been frightened of being um, mauled by a shark. Oh, my, I feel your pain. I have got a proper fear of being eaten alive by a shark. I can't stand dolphins because they've got teeth. I've and got I'm a fear of being swallowed alive by a whale or killed by a orca. I'm kayaking here and I'm upside down in the river and I'm thinking to myself, what's going to eat me? You never know where them great white sharks are going to end up, I tell you. You never know. Yeah, they'll be in the River Dee. They're going to be in the River Dee or the Trent. Paramedic Gaz Clark and technician Lee Timbrell have 22 years combined experience in the ambulance service. When I was working in Birmingham, they gave us a job. They've got this um, Wolverhampton to Birmingham canal run. Yeah. And this guy had collapsed a couple of miles down the canal. Mm. So we had to grab as much gear as we could and walk two miles down this track, down the canal path to find him. So after we finished, we had to lug our gear all the way back to the ambulance, following the same route as all the runners. And then when we crossed the finishing line, they gave us a medal each. <laughs> the team receive a call out to a woman who's been taken ill at home. 41 year old female, abdominal pains, breathing, uh, feeling of passing out from 111. This one. Access to there. The patient, Shireen, Hello there. was home alone when the pain ramped up. I'm Gary and this is Lee. What's the matter this morning? I've just been having a terrible pain in my stomach. Right. Like... So when did this pain start? Yesterday morning, four o'clock. Um, uh, it was very terrible. It's pain in my stomach and in my back. So you had and this since yesterday? I had it yesterday, but then I took paracetamol, ibuprofen, yeah. A lot of hot water bags and... Yeah, and it I eased was... off and died off a bit. Yeah, but then again, yesterday evening it started. Again, I did the same thing. And now again this morning and it's right. like that. When was the last time you talked to Mary Sue tomorrow? I did it at around uh, 8 o'clock now. Is this pain on the left or the right-hand side? It's the full stomach. Full stomach? Yeah. But you said it goes round into your back? Yeah, the whole back. So is it round the whole yes, of the your whole, body? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be one side more than the other. As I told them, I'm supposed to be having my periods, right. but I've not started bleeding. Right. I don't know whether it's because of that or... How much overdue with your period are you? Three days now. Three days? Three right, days. so it's not a vast amount of time okay. in every day. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you been going to the because toilet I, okay? I, not... I have gone to the toilet, but not as much as I should have been. You haven't opened your bowels as much as normal? Yeah. At the moment, the only thing that's flagging up is that your oxygen levels are too high. Okay. 37, 7. That's, the breath, that's proving that you're breathing a little bit on the fast side. Okay. That will be the dry mouth. Yeah. Right. Your temperature's up, even though you've took paracetamol. Okay. So that's pointing towards infection wise. Okay. Any chance for pregnancy? No. Stick your tongue out. Yeah, your tongue's quite white as well. Shireen's symptoms aren't clear. She's showing some signs of infection but her abdominal pain could be caused by a problem with her bowel or reproductive organs, or even appendicitis. So really, with multiple things going on, yeah. we really could do with getting it checked out, which I would suggest A&E. Okay. Shireen's husband is at work 10 miles away. Rupesh, we'll be going to New Cross A&E. So give me a call when you're there, yeah? There's no rush, there's no panic. Not at all. Okay, see you, bye, bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Yeah. Right, I say, you walk around fine, but we'll put you onto the bed so I can actually check your tummy out and that. All right, stick your bottom up here. I was in so much pain that my daughter saw me in pain and she started crying. Oh, oh. how old's your daughter? She's, she's going to be eight 
from the sixth to fifth. <laughs> she's worried about her mom. Yeah, she is. Okay. Listening for bowel movements, basically. Before they set off, Gaz wants to check there's no critical cause of Shireen's abdominal pain. Yeah. Right. There is bowel movements there, but they've reduced down in that bottom side, okay, which is hinting towards a bit, bit of an obstruction there or a bit of a blockage there at the moment. I'm going to have to have a little press of your tummy. What I need you to do, now it might make you feel sick, but I need you to look into my eyes. Okay, because you women are very good at hiding things from us blokes, you see. Yeah. So if I'm pressing on a cause pain, tell me. Yeah. It's not that painful. You're not going to punch me one. Yeah, no. Right, yeah. Obviously, before you knock me lights out, let me know. Yeah, and I can swap places with Lee. <laughs> right. I'm going to press in here, yeah. okay. Uh, it does the pain goes up. Yeah. Right, I'll ease off then. Yeah. Right. I've just ruled out a couple of things. Yes. So round by the kidney seems okay. Yeah, okay. And also a case of venous appendicitis when I pressed in, yeah, yeah. the pain should have eased. Okay. But it didn't, it got worse. Okay. So we don't think it's anything to do with appendix. Okay. We'll start to head off then. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, mm. No worries. Time you brush the cat. Didn't even feel it. Every time we move a patient we tend to do the obs again. Yes. Yours have been nice and stable, but you want to keep it that way. Yeah. Hopefully, yes, that would be lovely. Tap you on the back, a little bit of a belch. Yeah, wind out both ends, feeling fantastic, great. The crew reached the hospital in under 15 minutes, and despite her discomfort, Shireen's in good spirits. Right. Thank you very much. No, you no problem. <laughs> You've got enough going on without us being miserable. <laughs> Keep your hands just on your lap, see? That's Keep it. your hands and legs inside the ride at all times. See, that's it. You haven't been to Blackpool lately, have you? <laughs> right, now you can hold on to the sides if you want to. Now doctors can run tests to find the cause of Shireen's abdominal pain. A couple of day history of abdo pain. Could be one of a number of things. Yeah. It's nice to see somebody's actually done something to help themselves. Yeah. Taken all the right painkillers. Yes. <laughs> So I thought I was only 25. There you go. I like them, I said they could come again. Someone thought I was in my 30s though once. That was slightly insulting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 28. I was like that, thanks mate. Being in your 30s is no different to being in your 20s. The hangover just lasts a bit longer, that's all. I don't drink though, do I? So I'm all right. Is that you? No, bloody isn't. It's not me. It hasn't reached me yet. Look. Oh, yeah, that's you. It's that, not that's me. You. Oh. That stinks. A lot of people in my generation are going to have some real big problems when they grow older. I think in about 40 years' time, you're going to get a lot of people with DVT. Well, when I was a kid, you, you know, the thing to do was to be outside, running around, chasing the ball with your mates. Uh, that's, how often do you see that now? Because people like you won't let us out. <laughs> Don't go outside. <laughs> You were always a naughty child. Don't go outside! <laughs> it's full of crime! It's full of crime. Back on shift are paramedics Hannah Meredith and Aaron Campbell, who've worked together for more than two years. 33, low, low pressure, low pulse. How do they know? It's from registered nerves. Huh. The patient feels unwell. A category three job is urgent but not life threatening. The ambulance service aims to respond within two hours of the call coming in. Someone's actually used their mirrors. Oh wow! You can have a toot. Congratulations. Uh -huh. The ambulance was called on the patient's behalf by district nurse Sarah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Hello. Hello, mate. 
Hi, Maren, this is Hannah. Hello. Hello, I'm John. What's the matter with John today, then? <laughs> she knows better than me. Oh. Yes, he's been feeling unwell since Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, I've taken his blood pressure and his pulse. His pulse is quite low, and his blood pressure is quite low. He's got a history of um, heart failure and hypertension. John's blood pressure is usually high, so his low pulse and blood pressure today is worrying. His temperature is 36. He has got leg ulcers. Um, they don't look infected. I've redressed them, but I have taken a swab. As yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, yeah, I know you're busy. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot. You're up now, sir. Yes. Well, yes. Anyway, thanks for everything. Oh, that's all right. Thanks you got... a lot. Pop this in your ear. Okay. How do you feel, John? Not, not brilliant. Yeah, you can't, you're not sleeping very well. And, and how long has that been a problem for you? I'm going to pop days. some stickers on your chest, John, all right? Yeah, you can be on. I think your trousers are a bit big, John. Have you lost some weight, John? Yeah. I think you could fit two of you in them trousers. Well, I could now. <laughs> but they're handy for around the house. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret? I cut the sugar there for one thing. Some years ago. Yeah. How old are you, John? I'm, I'm 19 in July. Oh, you yeah. Never are. Yeah. Wow. You're on your own now, John? Yeah. Yeah? Were you married? I was, yeah. How long for? 24 years. Oh, blimey. And she died young. How old was she when she died? 46. All right. Jeez. Then I had a girlfriend then for 35 years. Oh. We were going to get married. And she got cold feet. Oh. <laughs> and um, and she died last year. After all those years, she got cold feet? Well, no, after about four or five years, she got cold feet. But you still stayed together, then? Yeah. yeah. We didn't live together, but we stayed together. Oh, really? Get me out of trouble. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Have you felt dizzy at all, John, over yeah, the past few days? Bits and, bits and pieces, just in the night. What about when you're walking around? Do you feel more dizzy then? Just a bit, not really, but well, like in the morning, I wake up, yeah, but a little bit, and I'm all right after a few minutes. Okay. Mm. Apart from, like, the fact that his pulse is around the 40, there's absolutely nothing else wrong. His blood pressure's 125 systolic. It's fixed itself. Has it? Yeah, your blood pressure's better than mine. Well, that's nice to know. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, it's not difficult with my blood pressure. <laughs> the main issue is I can take you up to hospital, no. but because you, you're actually quite well, yeah. I know you feel a bit rubbish, um, but in terms of like serious illness, I, don't realize that. I can't find anything. I know. Um, which is good yeah. news for you. So All right. Inside you, what you bought it for? Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ring your doctor. Because yeah, he knows obviously your full medical yeah. history and things. He's your GP, isn't he? Yeah. And we'll, like, we'll make a plan. Obviously, for us, the, the key aspect of the investigation that we would do would be why has his blood pressure dropped? We noticed that he was on quite a lot of um, one of the medications for high blood pressure. So for us, it was just a case of um, should we call his GP and find out why he's on so much um, or does he need to have a review? That's perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much, Doc. All right, have a, have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Okay, so you know you're by Soprolol? Yeah. We're going to half the dose. Okay, so tomorrow, um, the pharmacy will bring you some a new by Soprolol, um, and that should stop your, um, your pulse being too low. Yeah. All right, and you'll probably feel better then. Okay. Thanks very much. John's low heart rate meant not enough blood was pumping around his body. Halving his medication should fix it. The hospital would have done that for you, but you'd have sat there for, you know, for a long time. Yeah, and they waited for a long time. Yeah. Now. No, that's very much. No problem, as long as you're happy enough for that. I'm happy with that. Do you have any carers, John? No. Who no. does all of your cooking and your cleaning and stuff? I've tried to clean the plumbing, but I do the cooking. So you're pretty independent then, aren't you? Yeah, that's brilliant, that's fantastic. Would you like us to make you a brew? Yeah. What would you like? Cook tea. This is done cold. Milk? I like a lot of milk. You like yeah. it milky? No sugar? No. No. Thank right. you. Not a problem. You must get lonely after all those years with the... Well, you do, you do, but you get used to it, you know. Yeah.
Well, I was only 48 when my wife died. It's too young, then, isn't it? That's life, that's life that is, you know. I, mean, she, she, I happened to come home that particular day for my dinner. I said, I'll be home tomorrow for my dinner. I'm going to jump down the road. And um, she cooked the dinner and we sat in that and she just sat in a chair and died. Don't tell me. Wow. Yeah. Is that milky enough for you, John? That's better, thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. No trouble. Pleasure welcome. to meet you, John. All right, glad we could help. Lovely to meet you, John. Thank you. You take care, John. Thank All you. right. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. See you later on, John. Bye for now. I could have sat there and spoken to him and like and reminisced about life with him for ages. Yeah, and doing actually incredibly well for a 90 year old, no carer. I know. Does all his own cooking, he's got a cleaner. Yeah. To be fair, I'm 31, I'd have a cleaner if I could, uh, if I could <laughs> afford one. Yeah. Pete, hey, hey, he hasn't got any children. I know. He'd be a lovely person to look after as a dad. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a smashing grandpa as well, wouldn't he? Yeah. Eighty-one-year-old Joyce, who was refusing care, continues to struggle with dementia and diabetes. But she's still managing to live independently, supported by carers and her son. Michal spent ten days in hospital having tests to find the cause of his swollen, painful abdomen. He didn't have a hernia, but was diagnosed with a stomach ulcer and prescribed medication which has made him feel much better. 89-year-old Kathleen, who fell at home, had no serious injuries. However, the doctors did keep her in hospital overnight after discovering an infection, which was treated with antibiotics. 41-year-old Shireen, who was suffering from abdominal pain, was given pain relief in hospital. Tests didn't reveal what was causing her symptoms, which went away by themselves after a few days. John, whose blood pressure and pulse were low, followed his doctor's advice and adjusted his medication. He's had no further problems and continues to enjoy his independence. Yeah, all right, not a bad day at all. Same again tomorrow. Oh, let's see what we have tomorrow. And there's a cheeky return to station message. Uh, that's what we like to see at that, this time. Lovely.